This is uh, my first prototype of my Ray Matrix LED display um, connector from the Raspberry Pi. So I've just taken the um, connector that came with the display and the Raspberry Pi that I've already soldered the header onto and I've just used uh, female to male jumper leads to go from the Raspberry Pi to the connector. Works for testing, but this isn't a proper solution. It's uh, going to be prone for these cables pulling out and things like that. So I'm going to put this into a, a display case. I don't want to uh, use much space in this because it's going to go in a, a enclosure with the uh, which tight space. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to solder straight onto the Raspberry Pi. So this is a uh, Raspberry Pi W. This is how it comes. Um, this is the the W, not the WH. The WH already has a header on. This doesn't. So that means I can solder directly from the connector to the Raspberry Pi. I've bought myself another connector as well. So this is the same type of connector. I'm going to use um, the same connector for the end. I'm just going to snip this, solder it on. When I do this, now I've, I've obviously got the pin eye out because I needed that to, to work this out in the first place. But rather than work off the pin layout and potentially get something wrong, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to use the a multimeter to work out where each pin goes onto the Raspberry Pi and then do the same to put it onto the header, uh, the, the header, the GPIO ports of the new Raspberry Pi. So first of all, um, to take my cable, I think I probably want to round about the same length as the existing one. Uh, it's it doesn't take up much space so it's all right so let's just start off by snipping this overly neat but let's expose the wire so one of the things here is, is these do tend to have very thin wires uh, I've got a pair of wire strippers I'm just going to peel these apart and then use wire strippers to strip enough copper off so that I can solder it to the GPIO header. Just There we go, so let's just strip one of these back. I'm going to start with pin one. Pin one. Okay, so there's not a huge amount of copper there, they're quite thin, but that should be just about enough to go say, through one of the GPIO ports. Yeah. So, first thing to let's start with the, the first one, the red wire and make sure I've got the right pin because hmm. the only thing is you can't see I can work it out from the other end yeah so I yeah so what I want to need to do I need to stick my probe in this one figure out which one goes to where so this one so the multimeter is just off the screen here but um, you should be able to hear it because it's on uh, on beat mode so, so it starts at the bottom 
Okay, so continuity mode on the on the multimeter beeps when so I know that this red wire relates to the bottom one on this connector. If I go to the bottom connector on this one, then I can find out which pin this goes to. So it's going to be probably this white one here. Not that one, just for the right one. A bit of white with a black line on. Just this one here. Okay, so we got the established the one there. So counting up here. So it's, it's numbered in odd numbers on this row, and then even numbers on the bottom on the top row. So. It's 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23. Actually, rather than trying to remember that, I'll, I'll just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12. Double check that, 3. Yeah, 12. So now know that that bottom pin, which is the same as the one there, which is the red one I've taken back, needs to go to pin 12 on, as you hold it that way, the bottom row. Obviously, I'm, I'm trying not to make any mistakes here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's the right pin. I'm just going to try and balance that there. Give myself some solder. So the hardest part about soldering is actually uh, keeping the, getting the components to stay still while you're acting uh, them. Okay, so there's the first one soldered on. Okay, so that's the first one. Um, quite a few, 15, 14 more to go there. Uh, 16, I guess, is it? 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15 to go. Um, so I'm going to turn the fan on now, the extractor fan, because it's going to be quite a bit of soldering. Um, and I'll probably play this back in, in uh, faster than normal anyway, because otherwise it's going to, uh, going to take a while. So um, carry on with that.
Yeah, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge trying to hold it in my hand at the same time, so let's try this. It's a bit dusty, my old PCB holder. Give me a, an extra hand free. So looks like that's the final one soldered on. Um, they all look okay. There's just a couple of stray bits of wire, just make sure they don't cause a short circuit. And now it's ready to test it and see if it works. Okay, so now to give it a go, I've uh, plugged it into the um, RGB matrix just using the connector on there. You see, there's the, the wires I've soldered onto the Pi Zero. I've got a 5 volt power supply. This is uh, quite a meaty power supply because if you turn all the LEDs on, that's going to take quite a bit of power. And really, it's just a case of running a single command. Um, so, I've already installed the RGB um, matrix uh, code. So on here, it's going to run the demo. Um, it's going to use a PPM file that I've created. Uh, by default, it does a 32 by 32 display. So I've set minus calls width, uh, sorry, LED, uh, calls dash LED to 64. And um, that's it. So it's demo one, which is the play a image file. And there we go. And that all appears to be working correctly.